Hello, my name is Charlie D'Amelio and I am a content creator. The first TikTok I ever created was one in the locker room of my school. I taught my friend the dance after I had learned it and, and my friend posted it on her TikTok account. It's definitely just a surreal experience to go from having no one care to having people like actually follow you in your daily life. My advice for anyone wanting to start a brand is to think of yourself as a brand, you are your own brand, your reputation, how you treat people, because there needs to be a level of trust between yourself and the consumer, whether that's the consumer of content or the consumer of whatever you are providing. I think that there isn't a proper place to learn about finances. We learn about a million other things, but not what we should be doing with our money. We're just expected to know those things or have people tell us, and we don't always have that. So I think it's important to educate not only my generation, generations above and generations below on how to properly save and finance their money. When I was younger, I definitely got most of my financial advice from my parents because my dad growing up, he always wanted to be an entrepreneur and he made his own company and is very, very intelligent when it comes to money and saving money and how to spend it. And without my parents, I definitely would have been lost. But luckily you guys have steps so you won't be lost. Wow, that was so good. Nice. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Charlie. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is CJ McDonald. I am the founder and CEO of STEP. I'm so grateful that you joined us tonight. This is the first time we've done this, but we're very excited, and we've got a great lineup for you guys tonight. And you know, the reason why we're here is we are talking about the importance of talking to your kids about money at an early age. And we've got some very special guests with us this evening who are going to join us in just a little bit. And at the end, we've left some time for Q&A. So we've already received hundreds of questions from you guys, which is awesome. We're going to try to get to as many of them as possible. And if we don't get to all of them, we will follow up afterwards with some thoughts and answers. But um, please feel free to drop any questions that you have in the Q&A panel to the right of your screen by clicking on the question mark icon at any point this evening. And like I said, we'll do our best to get through all the questions um, that we can tonight. And additionally, at the end of the session, we're going to be awarding three high schools in the United States with $1,000 donations. So, you know, to help get your school considered for this donation, all you need to do is enter your school information or your child's school information in the panel to the right by clicking on the heart icon. And at the end, we're gonna select three schools um, and make those donations. Um, STEP is a very mission and impact driven company. Um, from day one, our mission statement has been to improve the financial future of the next generation. So wherever we can give back to students and schools, uh, we definitely try to do so. So let's dive into it. We've got an action-packed agenda and evening, but I wanted to give everybody a little bit of background of why STEP exists and you know what we're doing ultimately. Um, so five years ago, um, we started STEP and it always bugged us that schools don't teach kids about money, families don't talk about money, and money's obviously evolved and changed over the years and large traditional banks and credit card companies don't really tailor well towards the younger demographic and the younger generation. And so we found a void in the market and wanted to fill that and started STEP. And you know, some of you may know and use STEP and some folks on here may not know about STEP and, and have never used it. So just a high level background on what STEP is, uh, we built a FDIC insured mobile banking app uh, we offer a Visa secured spending card, uh, which is one of the only products in financial services that actually helps you establish and build credit before you turn 18. It's also a great way for you to begin your credit journey, even as a young adult, um, or repair your credit if you had some issues um, in your early adult years. Um, so we're, we're truly leaning into providing a, a stronger financial path. And as I mentioned, you know, we're a very mission and, and um, impact driven company. Um, and as part of our mission, we've developed this platform that provides teens and young adults with a safe, hands on environment way to learn about money. Um, but you can't do that by themselves. And so, you know, they really need us as parents uh, to help them along their financial journey. I'm the father of two kids. I have a seven year old son, I have a 10 year old daughter. 
And they were actually a big inspiration for starting Step because I wanted to make sure that they had the right tools and the right foundation um, to be successful in life. And money is just one of those things, rich or poor. You really have to understand how to navigate the financial ecosystem um, in order to put food on the table, clothes on our back, and just live our day-to-day -day lives. Um, but like anything in life, we need teachers, we need mentors, we need coaches to help us you know, learn the right way to do things and to help us build good habits and break bad ones. And, you know, in life as, as, as teenagers, you're forming these good habits and bad habits and money is one of them. And for a lot of people, they dig themselves into a hole very early on where they either damage their credit or accrue a lot of debt. And for a lot of people, it's really hard to dig out of that hole. And so the more that we can help, you know, folks at a younger age set the right foundation and set the right tone to hopefully have a, a stronger, more successful path, you know, along their financial journey um, is really important to us. And we try to instill that in, you know, what we do every single day. Um, so, you know, I think one of the things is our children look up to us and they learn by watching what we do. Um, and like I said, my goal as a parent is to help set my kids up for success and give them the tools to be successful in life. And tonight I'm excited to explore how we can do that when it comes to money, um, which is something that touches us each and every day. And currently today it's not required in most states uh, to learn about money in our early years. Um, and we put together this great evening um, with Tim Ranzetta, who's the founder of NextGen Personal Finance, and he's on a mission, you're going to hear from him shortly, to bring financial education to every high school across the country by 2030, which is something that we support and um, have talked a lot about. And we've also got Eli Manning, who's a two-time Super Bowl champion and also a step investor and the father of four beautiful children. Um, so this conversation hits near and dear to him. Um, but before we get into that, we wanted to, I'd like to introduce uh, Christy Legel, who's a dear friend and she's a partner at Step and someone that I've had the pleasure of working with over the course of the last 15 years in my career. Christy and I have worked together across three different companies and uh, we're fortunate enough to have her over the course of the last four years as our head of customer experience and someone that is the voice of the customer at Step and is managing our customers every single day. Um, today, we have over four and a half million customers on the Step platform in the first three years. And, you know, we, we, we are there to service our customers and provide a better experience. And I'm so grateful that Christy's on the team. And I'd like to turn the mic over to her to share some thoughts. Hi. Hi there. I'm so excited to be part of tonight's event, not only because I'm an employee, but because I wish that there was a step card for me when I was younger. To formally introduce myself, my name is Christy Legel, and I have the pleasure of heading up customer experience here at Step. I've been part of Step since its early days, over three and a half years now. I joined before our public product launch when we were building the promise of what would become the full-fledged product that you have available today. So being on the front lines, my team and I see each and every day how parents and teens are using our product, have insight into the questions that our users have, how sponsors leverage STEP as part of broader financial literacy for their kids and any roadblocks that they run into. I use all of these insights to accomplish my mission of helping to make STEP into the best financial services product for teens and young adults. I spent my entire career running operations and analytics teams. And at STEP, I'm so excited to have the opportunity to build something truly impactful that will improve the lives of an entire generation to come. Well, tonight I wanna to give you a glimpse into a few of those insights we get in my team. Let's jump into it. Well, today, some form of personal finance education courses are only required in 24 states. And that's even a huge improvement from just two years ago. For most of our teen customers, STEP is their first bank account. And this comes with some unique challenges. When they contact support, they don't even know the words to use to ask their questions. They ask us, how do I use the card? Do I stick it in the thingy? They just don't know the words to it the common banking terms that really make up this world. We might be familiar with the difference between 
debit and credit cards, but often your teens won't know this. We know that working towards having good credit score is critical to building wealth, but your teens might not even know what credit history is. So knowing that this is a common issue, we infuse education into every stage of the help process, from writing help center content, helping our customers in live chat. We always tailor our language and tone to make sure that our teens feel supported and empowered with a new set of financial vocabulary. This starts with something as simple as the language that we use. We begin every support conversation using terms that teens are accustomed to. Okay, with an exclamation point. Got it, with an exclamation point. I want our teen customers to connect with us and see that we are passionate advocates for helping them understand what's happening to their account and to quickly resolve any confusion. Well, another set of common questions we get are related to the purchasing world. Often, the first thing that teens do when they get their new card is to sign up for free trials all over the internet, and then their account gets hit with a recurring charge. They'll complain to support that someone is stealing their money, and when we point to the subscription service, they'll say, oh, I signed up for a free trial, not a subscription. Not understanding that by giving the merchant their card details, they're authorizing a future charge. Another common issue we see is caused by teens buying from unverified merchants that they see on their TikTok feed. They wind up with no way to contact the merchant when the page gets delisted or when shipping takes six plus weeks because it's coming from overseas. We need to educate fellow parents to coach their kids that all of these items are likely available on verified merchants like, like Amazon. So from an education standpoint, these are all the pitfalls that our younger customers fall into. And these are great for you to talk to your kids about at home. And we're here to support you. At STEP, our mission is to improve the financial future of the next generation. And we're deeply invested in this. Over the past two and a half years, we visited over 500 high school campuses, educating students and teachers and providing them with free financial literacy curriculum this is our own personal one, Money 101. We've awarded nearly a half a million dollars in scholarships and donations to schools. And we're the first FinTech company to be part of FinEd 50, which is a coalition that is dedicated to achieving state level action that guarantees equitable access to personal finance course for every student. The reason that I can say that STEP is the perfect starting point for you and your teens is that I know that everyone here at STEP is mission driven. We're all here to build the best banking services platform for the next generation. With no hidden fees, no minimums or overdraft, no way to overspend, really there's no way to fail. And on a personal level, like as a parent myself, the safety component was critical for me. My own daughter uses STEP, and I'm proud that she regularly checks her STEP account to keep track of her birthday money, her savings balance, and to plan her next purchase. I love that there are safeguards in place to make sure that she can't overspend, and we talk regularly about where she's spending her money, and it makes me feel secure that I can keep a close eye on her purchases from my own sponsor account and even act to resolve issues for her. This is because everything we build we also have our own children in mind. So I'd love to leave you with one key message. Here at STEP, we have the opportunity to level the playing field, to build an entire generation of teens into the traditional banking sphere and teach them about financial literacy and good banking habits, start them out with a strong credit score, save them from a decade of predatory check cashing services or chronic overdraft fees. This is our mission. We know that we can't do this without your support and approval. And we here at STEP, we want to partner with you to enable you to have these financial literacy discussions with your teens and to do whatever's best for your kids. So please join us as we fulfill our mission and kickstart your teen's financial journey. Thank you very much, Christy. Um, as you can see, many of our users come in without any financial foundation. And this is why it's so important as parents, we start the conversation early and we help them build smart money habits at a young age before they get into trouble financially. 
And to talk a little bit more about this, I'd like to welcome Tim Ranzetta. And Tim is a personal finance expert. He's also the founder of NextGen Personal Finance, a nonprofit that he started over 10 years ago. And Tim has spent decades working to help people improve their financial education. And we are very excited that he is here with us. I'd like to welcome Tim Ranzetta. Thank you, Tim. It's good to see you. Yeah, CJ, thanks. It's great to be with you. And it's great to be you know, with somebody whose mission is so aligned with ours in terms of educating the next generation uh, on these important topics around financial education. So I was going to, well, first of all, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, I realize I'm the only thing between you and Eli Manning at this point. So uh, I had some slides prepared that uh, wanted to go through. So I'll just wait a sec while that while that's up. Um, CJ, I have to say, I really love the work that your organization does with your focus on financial education, because um, as you as you alluded to, there really is not enough of this happening. Um, and so I saw the questions of the, the questions that you put up there. That's just a great way to engage people and help educate them on um, on those topics. Appreciate that, Tim. Means a lot coming from you. So I'm actually uh, while the slides while I'm waiting for the slides to come up, uh, I'm here in Madison, Wisconsin, because there is a national movement happening when it comes to financial education. So, as Christy said earlier, 24 states currently require that high school students take a course in personal finance. That number was about eight states, um, and that was only three years ago. And so, we've seen tremendous progress. But we recognize, you know, as the parent of two children myself, a 20-year-old as well as a 14-year-old, that the first and most important educator when it comes to money are our parents. So we'll just cycle through. If we go to the next slide, I'll just highlight the four four things I'd like to cover today. First of all, we call it personal finance for a reason. Uh, it's personal. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of experiences that we all have. And then I want to give you some tips, uh, both ways for you to talk about money, as well as the importance of let's make finance fun, because uh, often it can seem like it's a difficult subject to bring up. And I think there's some resources I want to share with you that I think you'll find will will be great ways to break break that ice. And then for those of you who are interested in going the extra mile here in terms of advocating for financial education, I'll give you some ideas on how you might do that at the local level. So let's start with kind of my own experiences up on the next slide. You know, the decisions we make about money are driven by our own personal experience. You talk to many adults, they'll tell you about habits that their parents had that then they continued. And so, you know, my story starts with a job walking a dog. I came from a family of six kids. I was the fifth child, the youngest who could actually walk our neighbor's dog who had broken her hip. Um, she needed somebody to walk her dog three days a week. It took her a year to recover. Every Friday, she gave me a crisp $5 bill, and I walked a third of a mile to the United Jersey Bank. I deposited that, and we and I would literally show my passbook to my father at the dinner table, and you know, a savings habit was built. Parents are My parents were an incredibly important uh, factor in terms of how I think about money, both the lessons they taught me as well as my mother, who, for having six children, that wasn't enough. She was the the volunteer, the Girl Scout troop leader. She was the newsletter editor for our parish. She probably did 30 years of story hour. And that giving back really led me about a decade ago to volunteer at a high school in East Palo Alto, California called Eastside College Prep. And it was teaching that class when I saw the the passion students had for learning this information. And then I'll tell you what really hooked me on the importance of financial education. They were going home and teaching their parents. How did I know that? I was getting emails from parents who wanted to learn how to invest for retirement. So that ultimately led me in 2014 to start NextGen Personal Finance. So as CJ mentioned earlier on the next slide, you'll see you know, our mission, which is you know when we got started in 2014, I think there were about 10% of high school students in America taking a personal finance course. I'll share with you the numbers later in the presentation, but our goal is by the year 2030 that 100%, every high school student in America would be guaranteed to take a one semester course before graduation. Let's go to the next slide, just real quickly, kind of how we accomplish that mission is we work 
strictly with teachers. We give them three, we work with them in three ways. We serve them in three ways. One is curriculum. So currently today we serve over 90,000 teachers who use our curriculum, both at the high school and the middle school level. Uh, we also provide activities. Um, really, we want to make finance fun. I think that's the theme that kind of permeates our curriculum. The second thing we do is train teachers. So over 17,000 teachers have invested over 400,000 hours just in the last several years to become better educators. And what's really rewarding about that, I teach a class in the psychology of money, is teachers talk about how this helps them in their own lives. Not only are they getting ideas and lessons they can bring to their students, but it helps them. And that's so powerful, so gratifying to me. And then the third thing we do, as I mentioned earlier, when we got started, only about 10% of high school students were taking a personal finance course. So we recognized we needed to take steps to help increase the number of students. So we'll I'll talk later about some strategies um, and how parents can be involved in that process on the front lines, going to board meetings, talking to administrators. Rather than have me tell you about the impact of personal finance, though, I want to share with you on the next slide uh, a video. And let's hear what young people say they are learning when they take a personal finance class. With personal finance, you take everything that happens in the real world and you bring it into the classroom. It's important to learn about it while you're in high school instead of graduating out of college and having no idea. You don't want to leave college and then be in debt, and sometimes that debt can follow you for the rest of your adult life. When my mom was in high school, she didn't have a class like this. I, I couldn't just ask my parents questions about like banking or finances because my parents hadn't gone through any of that. Since my family didn't talk much about money, um, I actually didn't know anything at all. I didn't even know investing was a thing. I didn't even know financial literacy was a thing at all either. <laughs> this is really the only class that we're given that's this applicable to real life. I've learned how to calculate a mortgage. I've learned what ways credit card companies try to trap you. These little skills right now that don't seem like they're so fundamental in the long run will really help you out and allow you to live uh, your life the way that you, you want to live it. I 100% think that all high school students should take this course. I don't know how someone could be successful without knowing how to manage their money. If you want kids who know how to not be in debt, what a credit score is, what kind of credit card options there are out there. If you want them to be more knowledgeable, safer with their money, as well as be better spenders, then personal finance is a must. Amazing students, and that's just part of our documentary, uh, The Most Important Class You Never Had. So I think we're going to share that link with you. It's, it's a great tool for advocacy just to show the power of personal finance education. If we can move to the next slide. Um, I want to highlight for you some ways to talk about money. We often think about we have to have this big conversation, and I'm much more uh, I'm a much more of a believer that as we go about our daily lives, just think about the ways you're interacting with money and use those as teaching moments for your children. So when you go to the next slide, I won't go through, well, first of all, let's identify what the need is. If we don't teach this in schools, if we don't teach this at home, they're gonna learn from social media. We know over three quarters of Gen Z is picking up personal finance advice from TikTok and YouTube. So let's, let's take a look at the next slide and just, first of all, I asked the question about the allowance policy and it was interesting to hear, um, so the, the quick summary of the results, 66% of you say you pay it with strings attached. You want your children to do chores, 8% pay without strings attached, and then about a quarter don't. This is something, you know, again, I say personal finance. We all, all have our personal attitudes. I'm not going to say what's right and what's not. What I will say is allowance is a good way for young people to get practice with money. So let's talk about your, your own daily lives if we look at the next slide. Here are some ideas. And again, I'm going to throw a lot of ideas out there. You have to figure out which ones work well with you and your child and your family. But, you know, one is just getting young people to be more thoughtful, to be more mindful about how they spend money. We call this the mindful money exercise, which is track your spending for a month and then go back and look. It does that spending match the values, the things that really matter to me. Make bill paying, make that bill paying process, which we all we stand in front of the computer with our list of bills that we have to pay, make it a family affair. Let them see money in, money out, understand kind of how that works. My father, 
you know, was a brilliant man in terms of encouraging saving. So there was a match program from the bank of mom and dad, every dollar I save 50 cents. Um, and so you get that sort of reinforcement. Um, teach delayed gratification. Instead of paying allowance on a weekly basis, pay it on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis. So they learn they have to spread out. You know, they can't spend it all at one time. And they learn about scarcity. Make trips to the grocery store. Teaching moments. Difference between generic and brands. Maybe give them the, the budget is how much you're going to spend when you go to the grocery store. Make them have to come up with the list ahead of time. Um, in the interest of time, we'll keep we'll keep moving. The last point I'll make, and CJ mentioned this earlier, your kids are watching. You know, as much as you know, you have to make sure you walk the you walk the talk, so to speak. Um, you know, my dad never needed to talk about frugality. I only needed to go in his closet or see him wearing those forty year old tennis shoes to know that okay, when we receive something in the house, we were going to use it out. We were going to use it till its maximum life. Um, money milestones. You know, these are all firsts that your children are going to encounter. And so really empowering them to be making the decision, put them in the driver's seat when they're opening that first account online, really sitting with them and talking through what are the fees, uh, what are the, the things they have to watch out for. And with this, I've, I wrote a blog post probably five years ago. And what I did was highlight these money milestones and then give you ideas for resources and activities that you could do to accompany those so that they don't walk into these experiences uh, blindly, but instead you've given them the exercise. So before they get that first credit card, you're going to look at what's called the Schumer box, which has all the details about the credit card, including the interest rate you're gonna pay, any fees, what happens when you're late with a payment, how do th things get adjusted? Uh, I just remember my students when I showed them that for the first time, um, very quickly saying, wow, there are a lot of fees here. And I think these, money milestones, they're really a great incentive. Your children are going to have a, a strong motivation to want to learn this because they know this is a step. Not They're just not going to get the keys to the car, but you're actually going to go through and look at the insurance policy so they understand the difference between comprehensive and collision, for example. Let's move on to the next, next slide. So how do we make personal finance fun? I realize I've only got about two minutes now, so just real quickly, let's go to the next series of slides. The average price of a new car, let's see, 18% of you said more than $40,000. The answer is $48,000. This can lead to a great discussion about monthly payments and how that impacts a family budget. Just quickly in terms of ways to engage your children, if we look at the next, I'll just quickly go through these three slides. One is questions of the day. And I think Steph does this very well too. And on their website where they're giving you questions and answers. Students, young people tend to be curious. It's a great learning device. We have over seven or 800 questions of the day available on our website. These can be great discussion starters. Next slide. When you look at the NGPF Arcade, you know, game playing, gamifying finance can be great because for many young people, they haven't had experience with things like investing. So we created a game called Stacks, which is 20 years of investing in 20 minutes. That's our most popular game played by, I think it was 3 million students last year. But we have a whole range of games really covering topics like insurance, crypto speculation. Uh, what does it feel like? What's the experience like living paycheck to paycheck? If you have a, a child who's about to go to college, our game Payback allows them to see how do you navigate to and through college and understand the trade-offs with all of the decisions that you that you make, monetary and non-monetary in terms of the trade-offs. And then if you have an influencer, somebody who's, who's gonna be that YouTube superstar, we have a, a game called Influence. Each of these games has worksheets attached to them too, so you know there's learning taking place also. So that's, uh, how, we, that, that's how we gamify uh, personal finance. Let's go to the next slide. You know, uh, videos obviously are extremely popular. We have a tremendous uh, member of our team, Yanelli Espinal, who every week creates something called FinCap Friday. Think of, the, think of that as current events. And so with a two to three minute explainer video, she also includes a quiz. Um, so this past week, she talked specifically about um, payment apps and the fact that they're not FDIC insured and just making students aware of some of the risks that come with that. Or maybe you're interested in documentaries or we had a 
an intern actually watched 20 videos, 20 documentaries, and they created worksheets along with them with questions, discussion prompts. And she said that was the best education she'd received uh, in her 18 year or 12 years of schooling. And so videos can be a really effective way. Again, those are available on our video library. And then books. So I've listed books here. You know, we're in the holiday season. These can be great stocking stuffers uh, from elementary up through high school. Sheila Bear may be a name that you recognize. She was former chair of the FDIC. And now she writes children's books about money. Very popular books called Money Tales. I mentioned Yanelli Espinal earlier. Really inspiring story about somebody who taught themselves about money and has had a tremendous impact in this financial education movement. She just came out with a book called Mind Your Money. Psychology, we have to understand why we make the money decisions that we do. Morgan Housel wrote a book called The Psychology of Money, over 3 million copies sold. I think that's critical. I know high school teachers have used that with their students who really love it. Finally, Gen Z Money Sense was written by somebody from Gen Z, Ella Gupta. She was a junior in high school at the time. I think that can be a great book um, because she writes it in the language that Gen Z will really, really understand. Next. So lastly, and I just want to close out, close out quickly here. Um, there's a tremendous movement afoot to increase access to financial education. As I mentioned on the next slide, you'll see the progression. We've gone from six states to 24 states. And the reason that happens is because a coalition of the willing comes together. This is parents, this is students, teachers, administrators who see and believe it, and they see the impact of this course and wanna do more. So when we look at the next slide, you'll see the states. And again, all of this information will be provided to you afterwards. You can see whether your state is included and the dark blue are states where it's currently required and the lighter gray are those states that are currently in the process of implementing. So usually when a bill passes, it's two to three to four years before every student who graduates from that state. Um, but on this, this map, when you go to our website, you'll actually be able to click on your state and we track over 12,000 high schools and what they're doing, whether it's being offered as an elective course or whether it's being required, because in some states that don't require it, local decisions have been made because advocates have stepped up and said, this needs to be taught. And I think, you know, I mentioned earlier the curriculum and the professional development we provide. I didn't mention everything we do is, is free and it's available. And so there isn't a cost for schools, which can be a really big hurdle and making it available to all I think has really been a game changer in terms of increasing the speed at which adoption has taken place. So the last slide I wanna hit on is just, we know as parents, you have a, a really strong motivation to ensure your children are getting the best education they have. We just believe finance education is one of those critical, really essential courses for all students to take. And so what we've created for you is kind of a self-service advocacy toolkit. So before you sit down with an administrator, before you sit down with the, the school board and make your pitch, we're kind of giving you all the tools you need in order to do that successfully. So I want to thank you. I'm sorry I went over on a little bit on time here, but I just want to thank you for being here tonight, for being the best, the earliest educators of your children about money and for, for your commitment to really help your children succeed in the future. Thank you. No, thank you, Tim. I mean, that was awesome. And uh, hopefully you guys learned some things and uh, check out his website. There's tons of resources. And um, we obviously all recognize the importance of instilling good money habits in our kids. Um, but figuring out how to approach the subject isn't always easy. Um, I'm sure everyone in the audience appreciates your practical advice, Tim, and how to have age appropriate money conversations. And we just obviously appreciate you being here and, and being a partner on our journey. Um, and coming up next, I'm excited to introduce you to someone that does not need an introduction, Eli Manning. But before he joins us, we want to share a little story from another step investor, also a friend of mine, uh, the star of Stranger Things on Netflix, Caleb McLaughlin. And he's going to talk about how he made his first hundred dollars.
Hello everyone, I'm Caleb McLaughlin, and this is how I made my first hundred dollars. My sister and I used to collect plastic bottles and bring it to the grocery store, and outside the grocery store they had these like recycling vending machines. So you put bottles in and like pennies and quarters come out. I kept doing that for like a couple of months and I ended up making a hundred. We went to uh, the dollar store, Dollar General, and just bought a bunch of like toys. I felt accomplished. I felt like I did something. Even to this day, like I find a penny on the floor, a quarter, I pick it up, I kiss it, you know, good luck, put it in my pocket. My advice to kids on how to start making money is to be a student, watch your environment, learn, be creative, um, think outside the box. Thank you very much, Caleb. Um, now, if everyone would please help me welcome two-time Super Bowl champion and MVP, co-host of the Manning Cast on ESPN, founder of the Eli Manning Children's Clinics, also a step investor, but most importantly, the father to four amazing children, Eli Manning. Eli, thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks, thanks so much, CJ. Really uh, excited to be on with you. Yeah, and listen, man, congratulations, obviously, on your amazing football career. And, you know, what you're doing with Manning Cast and, and, you know, Monday nights with us in our house are, uh, are great to see the Manning brothers. Um, but just all your success to date. Um, just wanted to say congratulations and fortunate that you're part of the journey with us. And thank you for being here tonight. Yeah, well, thank you. And, and congrats to you as well. Obviously, what you're doing with Step and as an investor and, and hearing your story was really the, the reason uh, I got involved and, and know the importance of, of what you're doing and, and helping kids, having kids myself and and making sure they're, um, you know, they're responsible with their finances and understanding the importance of, of managing your money and being smart with it. Yeah, no, I appreciate that very much. Um, so everything you've done, obviously, on and off the field is amazing. But at core, you're a family man, you're a parent, you're a dad. And you've got four kids. Um, and they're coming to that age where money starts to become, you know, obviously a little bit more of a topic in the Manning household. And um, just wanted to chat with you a little bit about, you know, how your role, you know, obviously on the field and now life after football, all the jobs that you've had kind of in your life, um, how those compare to, you know, how you think about and approach being a parent. Yeah, what well, I think, you know, being a parent is is my most important job. And, and I was fortunate enough to have great parents. And, and I remember, you know, my, my dad, I understood he played in the NFL a long time. And when he got done. Uh, he had a lot of opportunities to do do certain things that would have uh, some jobs would have, you know, kept him away from us and from his, his three boys. And he he made decisions based on, well, I want to be around them. I want to coach them on their little league teams. I want to be their basketball coach or go to their their baseball games and, and you know, go to their football games on the weekend. I want to be able to travel to to watch them play college and, and do those things. And so that 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 always and still to this day has a big impact on me that, you know, my number one responsibility is to, to be a father and to be a great father. I think I have to be present and I want to coach them in their, in their leagues and their basketball games and, and be a part of all that they're doing. And so that's uh, my dad, you know, was fortunate enough to, to, you know, talk to him about that. And, and as I became a parent, you know, just having those conversations with him, um, and that's, you know, that, that's still kind of is the number one thing that goes through my mind on some of the decisions I make is, well, is that, you know, how much time is that going to, um, is that going to take? Uh, is it, is it nights? Is it days? I like to be home, uh, you know, at nights as much as possible, uh, to be around my kids, whether it's even just driving them to some of their sporting events. Sometimes that's the best one-on-one -on -one time for me right now is, uh, is in the car with them. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, if Eli, if you could give your younger self any advice, not money related, what would it be? I think just to ask more questions I, I, and to, um, to, I was around some unbelievable people early on in my, in my life. And I don't think I took advantage of, of really getting to know them. And, and whether it was a, a Wellington Mara, who was the owner of the Giants, uh, you know, he passed away in 2005, but I was, you know, uh, around for a year or two and, and had, you know, got to see him a few times in the cafeteria at the Giants practice facility, but I was too young or too scared or too shy to go up and just uh, sit with them and, and, and have breakfast with them or have a cup of coffee or eat lunch with them and just ask them about, you know, what it was like 
uh, you know, with, with Charlie Connerly or Frank Gifford or some of the old players or, you know, just being around the New York Giants for so long. I think in the same thing with, with uh, former quarterbacks, former players, older players, just to sit down and, and, and ask a ton of questions about, uh, you know, things that have made them successful, things that have, uh, that, that drive them, you know, stories, even just funny stories about, you know, uh, playing in a different time or a different age or, or life stories about family. So I think I just, I didn't, I, I think I was too shy um, and, and early on where I didn't take advantage, even though I wanted to do it, you know, thought about it. I was just too scared to, you know, sit there and just kind of try to um, benefit from the experiences and knowledge of other people that had been around my life that I, I, I missed those opportunities. And, and, and now in some cases it's too late. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good viewpoint there. If you could give your younger self any advice as it pertains to money, you know, knowing what you know now and as a parent and whatnot, um, you know, what advice would you give your younger self? I'd say kind of the same thing. Ask, ask a lot more questions. And, um, and, and that's to, to, you know, to my parents. I think, I think it's hard to say I should ask my parents more questions. I, I just don't think I even knew where to start on, on how to ask a question on, on some things. You just don't know uh, when you're when you're young of, of of what to ask or how things go. But as I even as I got uh, got into the NFL and you know just it's just a big jump. All of a sudden you're in college and you're kind of on your on your parents' payroll and they're giving you a monthly payment and all you know you're drafting the NFL and you, and you you're getting checks and you got endorsement deals and so. I, ha- I was lucky enough, you know, I had a, you know, advice from my, my dad I had a financial advisor who, you know, still have to this day, same, same guy, same company. And, and he just kind of said, Hey, I'll handle, I'll handle this stuff. You handle football. And I'm like, that, that sounds like a good plan. Like I'll, 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 I'll stay focused on football and, and you, you figure out the rest. And, and, you know, he was, it was good. He gave me kind of a, you know, a budget, what what I should live on and and that you know changed and he's basically the game plan for me was hey you want to live off your endorsement deals the football anything you make off football we're putting that away we're investing that we're saving that we don't touch that and, and so that was the game plan and I just said okay so you, you just tell me what I'm you know what I can spend if I spend too much you, you tell me that also and and you kind of you know still have that relationship today um, and, but I still, uh, and I have asked more questions as, as we've gone along, but I think early on, uh, I didn't ask anything of, you know, just about, yeah. about saving, about mortgage, about, you know, you know, you know, I knew the difference between a credit card and a debit card, but besides that, I didn't know a whole lot. And it's, you know, it's really kind of since I retired from football that I've got a lot more educated on, on just the way the world works and, different opportunities and, and different ways to you know be smart with my money. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to bring up football, but since you did, I have one question for you related to football. You said you, you know, your dad said to focus on it and you did a pretty darn good job doing that over the life of your football career. But uh, in 2007, you led the Giants to an unbelievable comeback uh, in Arizona at Super Bowl 42. And uh, just curious uh, what it was like to win your first Super Bowl and before you answer that question, I was actually at the game in Arizona and uh, my entire family is from Boston and all Patriots fans. Uh, my mother was a cheerleader for the Patriots for four seasons. And so, you know, at the end of the game, um, it looked like the Patriots might win that game. And so I went up to the uh, gift shop to or actually my wife went up to the gift shop to get some gear for my family and they had all Patriots gear out because they were they're pulling all the stuff out of the boxes and putting up the Patriots gear and all of a sudden they closed the doors and went into a panic mode and started switching out all the gear to Giants gear and um, anyways you led this unbelievable comeback with the helmet catch with a you know unbelievable throw to David Tyree and ended up winning that game and you guys were big underdogs but just curious you know, what it was like to win that. And um, you worked so hard your entire life to achieve that, what that moment was like for you on the field. Yeah. Well, first off, I, I, I would like to say I'm sorry to you and your family for, for beating the Patriots, but I'd be lying. So I, I can't, I can't say that I'm truly sorry. Um, but I feel for, yeah. feel the pain that you, you know, that your mom and 
was going through. But on the other end, y'all, you know, the Patriots have won six Super Bowls uh, in kind of the last 20 years. So I think you're OK. You're, yeah. I, I'm more I guess maybe I'm saying I should say thank you for sharing some of those Super Bowls with me. So but um, like you said, I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal as as an athlete at, at any level, whether it's when I was a high school football player I wanted to win a state championship in college I wanted to win an SEC championship or a national championship never never succeeded at, at either of those levels on, on winning a championship but um you know finally got the opportunity and, and, and I saw the year before 2006 I saw my brother win a Super Bowl with Indianapolis and I saw this the the grin that was implanted on his face for the next six months and it was it was hard to be around him just because everybody's congratulating him and he's you know just so happy that I was like all right I I, I, I want to have that that grin I want to have that experience that actually put maybe put a little bit more uh, determination in, in my in my work um, uh, to get that championship but it, it's just such a special bond when you win when you win a championship in, in any sport or it really i think it, it's in, in sports or in business or if you do something spectacular and you're considered at the best um and in sports it kind of ha- it ends every year there's going to be a champion you have you know and so it's exciting but i think just the you know what's been special for me i think is just the bond that you have with with those teammates when you win a championship and you think about all the ups and downs and the tough calls and the injuries and the playing hurt and the two a days and the extra study sessions and just the commitment that you made to that team and each other to try to go out there and do it and, and to succeed uh, doing it is, is, uh, is special. So just the respect that you have with those, those teams that you win a championship, I have a lot of former teammates that, that I, I'm close with. Um, but the ones where you've won a Super Bowl with, with those guys, even if I haven't, you know, some of them I haven't seen in, in 10 years, you see them, it's, it's an automatic hug. I mean, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a special love and appreciation. And, you know, have some other teammates, you see them, uh, you kind of go for the handshake, yeah. uh, you know, if, if you didn't, if they weren't part of the, a couple of those winning teams. And so it's, um, it's one of those things when you do win, though, it, it's not, um, it, you want that feeling again. It's a, you, you, you want to experience it again. It's not a, Oh, I'm satisfied. I never had to win, a, win another one. I, mean, I swear, the next year you're even hungrier because you want you want that feeling um, because it's a special moment when the when the clock hits zero and you know you're world champions. Uh, it's a lot of emotions going through your through your mind uh, at that moment. Yeah, well, it was an amazing game, and my family got Giants champion shirts. So <laughs> there you go. Um, switching gears back, you know, as a parent. You know, you've got four kids and just curious, you know, um, you've got a 12 year old daughter and and how you start to think about as your kids enter that age of, you know, kind of being, um, you know, financially curious. And, you know, our kids like want things and how you kind of strike that balance of, you know, want versus need um, and just how you handle kind of talking to your kids about money as they kind of, you know, enter the age of, you know, teenage years and whatnot. Yeah, I try to be very, very open uh, with, with with my kids about uh, what's going on. Some things might be over their head where you're talking about, you know, they see fancy cars and they, you know, you go to, a, you, we go to a lot of, you know, Giants games and you walk into the players lot and you see Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, you know, I'm just, hey, I got my Toyota pickup truck and I'm fine with it, but just kind of understand, you know, you kind of talk about, you know, buying a car and how you, you know, uh, hey, whether you have a, you lease or you know buying a house and there's a mortgage you know kind of talk about all those things just kind of get it out there throw it in their mind it might be too much it might go over their head i kind of always use the you know for my 12 year old you know hey this costs a hundred dollars you put up twenty dollars and then you're paying one dollar a month until you kind of pay it all you know just kind of you know this kind of a general idea of, of how it's how it's done and how the world you know, works in, in, in some of those stages. And so, um, you know, with her, she's 12. She just got a, kind of her cell phone last year. That was the first big step. Uh, and, and you know, I know I've talked to you a little bit about uh, getting close to the time of, of giving a, getting a step card. I think right now, I, I think I, for me, I just remember, you know, growing up, you know, you didn't have cards, you didn't have all this stuff. It was just, you had cash. And, and so just understanding, I think that's the first step is understanding, Hey, I have this much, 
I spend it, uh, you get your change back, and now you have, you know, you have less. And just understanding kind of how it works and what what things cost, and yeah. uh, just kind of understand that. Hey, here's here's forty dollars. You know, you're going to the mall. Like you gotta, you you know, you gotta kind of space it out. Do you want do you want the uh, the the stuffed animal for thirty two dollars? Like really, is that is that what you're going for, or do you want to go to Sephora? You know, I got three girls. Sephora is like the ultimate you know, goal to get in there and get their, get their makeups and stuff. And so just kind of understanding, you know, what you, what should you, what you should spend on or what you should save on. I think for me, kind of the big, you know, growing up, it was, you know, we went to the movies a lot. I don't, kids don't go to the movies a, a ton, but you kind of go to the movies, your parents give you, Hey, here's $40. And, and, um, and so I would kind of say, well, all right, I'll pay my $6 to get in you know, you know, buy some popcorn and try to kind of save the others because I was really what I really wanted was eventually go buy some CDs. That was like the big thing. You go to a um, go to the CD store and, and and buy buy music. And so I was always like saving for that. So I say, hey, well, maybe I won't buy the popcorn. Maybe I won't get the sweet tarts and the the big giant you know, Pepsi or yeah. or Coke and 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 save on that so I can eventually get other things. So that was kind of my first, I think, money moment. Of, of kind of, sit, you know, not spending everything just because I have $40. I didn't have to spend it all at the movie when I, there was other things I would prefer rather than, you know, cotton candy and, and, and food. And so um, I think that's kind of what I want to try to teach with, with, with my kids. It's, hey, give them, like, when we go somewhere, hey, give them, give them money and understand, you know, we're going to stop in a couple stores before we go to the one you really want to go to. So they kind of learn, hey, I'm not going to buy anything in here or, or they are. And then understand going to the spot they want to be and, and realize they don't have enough money and, and, and kind of have to sit it out. And so I think that's, that's kind of the, I think the, you know, the message or the experience you want to give them at this age, so they truly understand what they have. Um, we haven't done the allowance thing. I didn't, I remember my dad in, in high school, I had the option either play sports kind of all summer uh, you know, full time or or get a job, and uh, I think I'll kind of probably have the same thing with with my kids. And I I, I love sports. All my all my my girls, my little guy, they're all getting into sports and, and playing a ton. So if as long as they're doing that, they're staying busy, they're working hard. I think that's that's beneficial, and, and we'll kind of learn the the money lessons along the way. Yeah, I feel you. I uh, I took my family to Disney World last year and, you know, first day we walk into the gift shops everywhere and my kids are like, I want this, I want this. And I just sat them down. I said, look, we're here for a couple of days. You're going to see a lot of gift shops. You can each pick one thing. Right. And I'm like, you have your step cards. And so at the end, just remember what you want and you're going to buy it. Right. And again, that was like a small teaching moment of, of you know, they wanted this and they wanted that. And I just told them you can pick one thing each. Um, and they did. And it, it was a moment that, you know, they'll remember. It's like they bought it with their step card. They saw the money come out, but they know that they bought it. And, you know, it's interesting how they cherish that a little bit more than when mom or dad buy them something. Yeah, so no, I, I definitely agree with that. When you when you spend kind of what you feel like your your you know, hard earned cash and even though they might not, have, you know, they're they're working hard in school and they're have their money when when you you know you could save it you could spend it on anything when you when you spend it you 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 appreciate it more i think there's definitely yeah. something definitely something to that yeah so in your household you know between you and your wife abby like is there one parent that kind of like leans more towards the financial side of discussions with your kids or is it kind of split responsibilities uh no i think i handle i probably handle more of the financial discussions and and try to explain um, these things going on. I think if my kids want money to go do something, if, if they'll definitely, if, even if I'm around, they'll wait for my wife to come, come home and ask her for, for, you know, 20 bucks to go into town and go to CVS or go buy something. So I probably, you know, kind of give the big talk and, and, you know, explain everything and, Hey, this, I'm giving you this, but you got to, do something or you got to, you know, you're not to help me take out the garbage later where, where I, 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 you know, they're like, all right, dad, I don't need this long story. Can I just have the, the 20 bucks? Money. Uh, money. Or my, my, yeah. My wife's a little, she's a little quicker uh, just to, you know, go, go have fun and, and, you know, you know, kind of get on me that they don't, 
they, they, they deserve it. They, they work hard. They do well in school. They, you know, deserve to go into town on a Friday after school with their friends and, and make sure they have enough to, to, you know, buy their, buy, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, drink or, or, uh, you know, star, star, uh, or Starbucks, uh, you know, sugary drink they need to get them all jazzed up. I love it. Um, Eli, who's been the most influential person in your life? I think definitely my dad has just, just on, on so many, so many ways. And, you know, I think, I think a lot of people, you know, assume just, if you know our story, my dad, you know, played college football, played in the NFL for 14 years. I think a lot of people assume that he had this master plan of creating like NFL quarterbacks and Peyton and I were like his, his mission that he was, you know, we were training for football since we were six years old to become quarterbacks and, and, (laughs) And nothing could really be further from the truth. Um, we played a lot of sports, but I played basketball all through high school. I played baseball through high school, um, and 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 worked hard at, at all of them. I was always a little bit better at football. Kind of knew that was the path I would take, and, and and hopefully one day be able to play college football was really the goal. Once I you know once I uh, became the high school starting quarterback, and 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 so, but for me, like just watching my dad, how he can really how he conducted himself um, around people, around fans. Uh, growing up in New Orleans, he played there 11 years. We would, you know, we would go to home games and, and, you know, people would walk up to him and ask for autographs, ask for pictures. He signed every autograph. He signed, he took every picture. He was polite. He, you know, he, he talked with everybody. And so as I started going through the same things in college and NFL, I just thought, well, what, what did my dad do? Um you know, and he and he was he was you know just so so kind. The the friendships, the relationships. I still see him to this day. How he keeps up with his pals and his buddies, and it's it's a you know a great reminder to me to you know hey to send send a text to an old teammate. You know, call an old buddy, a high school buddy, every once in a while. You're in the car and you have ten minutes just to say hello. I see how he still does that. So just keeping those friendships, those relationships. Um, how he's how he's been uh, frugal with with his with his money. He grew up from you know not having very much at all, and and to being a you know NFL quarterback. But he uh, he, he never was flashy. He never overspent. He he uh, was you know always provided and and knew kind of what he wanted to spend on. If we're, you know he, he liked going out to dinner, that was kind of his thing. He still when we go out to dinner as a family. He, he, he is insistent, you know, he's going to get the check. He's, he's buying us dinner. And so that's what he wants to do. And, and we let him do it. I started ordering some better wine. Uh, you know, he started getting on me about that. It's kind of like, Hey, what, you know, what's this wine you're ordering here? So, uh, it's getting a little expensive. And, and, and so, um, I said, well, that's just what mom drinks. That's what mom wanted. And so he kind of, kind of shuts him up quickly. You got to keep mom, mom happy. But, uh, you know, I think that's, uh, just the way, the way he's, you know, conducted himself, the father that he was, the person, the friend, um, you know, those have, have been a, ba- a big, a big impact on my life. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, um, I appreciate the, the insights here. I want to open it up to a few questions. We've got hundreds of questions that have come in. We're obviously not going to get to all of them, but there's a few common themes that we want to kind of hit on. And then, like I said, we'll follow up with, you know, some more in-depth um, answers across, you know, all the questions that came in, but, um, really appreciate you being here, Eli, before, you know, we open it up to questions. I wanted to just play a quick game with you, if that's okay. Sure. Um, I call it overrated, underrated, and I'm going to say a word and I just want you, whatever comes to mind first to say overrated or underrated. Okay. The TV show, the bachelor or the bachelorette. <laughs> uh, Underrated because I had a teammate on it, right? Flowers for Valentine's Day. Ooh, I like flowers. Those, those underrated. The movie and the whole Barbie theme that's happened over the course of the last few months. Uh, I'll say overrated. I haven't seen it, but I'll say overrated. Netflix. Netflix is is underrated. Elon Musk. Elon Musk is overrated. Taylor Swift. I think Taylor Swift is underrated. Avocado toast. <laughs> Definitely underrated. 
What about the NFL today? Like, I think the NFL. Oh, oh that's a deep. That's a deep one. Um, one word. Uh, it's 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 underrated. What about quarterbacks in today's game? Uh, quarterbacks, they're overpaid. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith. Uh, underrated. And last one, TikTok. Overrated. I don't know. I've seen your TikTok. It's amazing. <laughs> Eli, I can't thank you enough. I really, really appreciate your time. It's been truly inspiring to hear your experiences both on and off the field. And I'd like to invite Tim back up to join us. And um, I know we're just about at time, but we've got lots of questions. It's been an exciting evening and really appreciate everybody being here and sticking with us. And, you know, Tim, thank you for the presentation. Christy, thank you for walking us through the customer journey. And Eli, thank you very much for being here and spending some time with us tonight. It's not Every day you get to ask questions to an NFL legend as well as a financial expert at the same time. So we're grateful for both of you. And, um, you know, again, wanted to just kick off and answer a few of the questions that came up. But I might tap, you know, you guys on a few of these if that's OK. Sure. Awesome. So to get us started, the first question that came up um, was from Nandi. And this actually came up in several questions, but I was told at a young age to stay away from credit cards. In my adult age, I realized credit is vital. How do you introduce that to your teens? Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this one because this is a big part of Steph's product. Um, you know, the Step card is a secured card that at first swipe is helping you build credit um, even as a teenager. Um, so it's got guardrails on it. You can't spend more than what you have. If you have $100 in your account, the most you can spend on that card is $100. Parents have full visibility and transparency into how and where their kids are spending. Um, and it starts to become a tool that you can talk to your kids about, you know, how and where they spend their money. But at each time they make a transaction using their step card, they are building credit um, we report to all three credit bureaus on their 18th birthday. And, you know, the average step customer has a credit score of over 725 compared that had been using step when they turn 18 compared to a non-step user, uh, which credit score is in the 600s. Um, so doesn't cost anything. And it's simple just as you're living your life and spending where you need to spend uh, step is helping your kids build credit. So um the next question is from daryl and he's got a question for eli eli who is your favorite nfl player throughout the nfl history who um that's that's a tough one i mean gr growing up i think i think when you usually probably when you're like age nine to 16 is is a vital part of of growing up and, and your football fandom. That's that's like, I feel like when you're reading every program, you wanna know where people's from, you're watching games and and you're, you're going in the backyard and you're pretending to be that player. And so for me, I think, uh, you know, Dan Marino, Brett Favre were, were kind of my heroes on the yeah. field. Just uh, Marino just throwing lasers, Favre, same thing. Just looked like he was having so much fun yeah. on the field just you know you know improvising running around dancing and celebrating kind of jumping up and down so those guys is, are, are the guys who uh you know love watching the play and 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 tried to um you know copy their style a little bit in the in the backyard with my buddies <laughs> love it thank you for that um next question comes from amanda how do i learn ways to save while also teaching my kids uh, Tim, I know you had some slides and you've got a lot of experience here, but maybe you can take this one. You're on mute, Tim. Thanks, CJ. Yep. Uh, I think it starts in terms of thinking about savings. If you don't have a pattern or a habit of saving is really just starting small. So maybe it's $5 a, a week, maybe it's $10 a week, but just start getting in that habit. And you, in order to do that, I think it's important to 
set up a budget, establish a budget. There's some great apps out there that can kind of make that easy because it'll draw in your bank accounts, your credit card statements, it'll kind of make that information easier for you to collect over time. But I think it starts, starts with setting a goal and it might just be a small goal. And then once you achieve that, you know, there's a lot of psychology wrapped up in saving. And once you have those early successes, it feeds future successes. Start small, have grace with yourself, understanding that sometimes budgets don't always work out exactly the way you would like, but just the fact that you're raising this question means there's a level of motivation that you have. And so I wish you the best of luck. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Um, next question came in from Jessica and we have several questions on this topic, but how do I get my kids more interested in investing? Um, I can go ahead and take that, but, um, Earlier this year, we launched um, stock investing on the Step platform, and you can buy stocks for as little as one dollar. Um, so you can buy fractional shares of stock. Uh, parents have full control and visibility over whether their kids can invest in the stock market or not, and can even put parameters around how much they can invest. So you can say they can't invest more than twenty five dollars a month, um, and and they, you've got some controls as a parent, but you have the ability to start to talk to your kids about investing. And, you know, we think that that's important. It's, it's less about the dollar amount and more about just getting, you know, um, some experience um, with small dollar amounts and just learning and asking questions. And, and we actually just launched a new feature where you can round up your purchase change. So if you make a purchase on your step card for, you know, $4 and 25 cents, you can take the 75 cents of change and round it up to the nearest dollar and invest that 75 cents into a stock of your choice. And you can go in and change that, you know, as frequently as you want, but it's less about the dollar amount in my mind as a parent. It's more about just starting to have the conversation and giving them kind of the platform and the tools to, to start to learn and ask those questions and see how the stock market works. Um, and so happy to spend some more time on that offline, but, uh, I believe that, you know, investing is a critical part, you know, in our long-term journey and it's not about the dollar amount. It's just about starting to have some of that experience. So, um, from Megan, when dealing with money management, how do we get our children engaged in trying to save money versus, you know, us as parents doing it for them? Um, I think we talked a lot about that tonight, kind of the need versus want and striking a balance with, you know, our kids. But Tim, do you have any thoughts about kind of just money management and, you know, how we can, you know, inspire to have our kids save more? Because a bunch of questions have come through tonight about, you know, kids spending habits and how you can curb and control, you know, the kids spending habits. But saving is equally as important. And I loved how Eli you know, kind of laid out the, the $20 scenario and maybe it's taking a dollar a month, you know, and just teaching them that, hey, you got to pay this back. Um, but curious to get your thoughts, Tim, with all your experience, both as yeah. a parent as well as someone that's kind of, you know, deep in the space as a financial expert. Yeah, I can't take credit for this idea, but, you know, there's this idea of the three, three jars. Um, so if you're providing your child with allowance, kind of developing this habit that a certain amount goes in the savings bucket, a certain amount goes in the spending bucket, and a certain amount goes to giving. Um, so then you're kind of also instilling in them this idea that um, the ability to give back. And so, you know, with the savings, it can be, you know, my, my dad kind of had a matching program, you know, banks these days are paying a little bit higher interest, you know, three, four or 5%, but that's, that's been rare over the last, 10 or 15 years. And so the bank of mom and dad can provide that incentive, you know, by putting in an extra 50 cents for every dollar, dollar that they save. But I think it's the earlier, we know habits get formed at a very young age around money. And so it's really instilling in that problem, instilling in your, your child uh, as soon as possible. But I think there's also this element of, of goal setting um, because there is this instant gratification that, that young people will often have. And so even in the spending bucket, having that conversation about what is the thing that they really want that might not be because, you know, what teens spend the most money on when you look at the food ca categories, it's food, yeah. you know, because they're hungry, right? And food and games, I think games is we see a lot of gaming on our platform. Yeah. And so getting them to be just more that that money journal that they set up the monthly mo money journal where they're actually being they're sitting down and thinking about it um, and really is the money that I'm spending kind of 
align to the values, the things that I really want versus there's something in front of me, there's a stimulus in front of, because it's not only the physical world, it's also the online world. I know the friction, friction is being eliminated. You know, there's these things called dark patterns where websites are encouraging people to take certain actions. And if you're not thoughtful about it, it's easy just to get, to get sucked into it. I think that's great advice. Through all the questions, and I again, there were hundreds of questions that came in that we're not going to be able to get to. Um, the, the, the common themes and the most asked questions were around credit and how you can build credit and how you should talk to your kids about credit and how as parents you should be thinking about credit. We touched on that briefly, but obviously a, a critical part. A big one was around investing um, and like how to invest and ultimately, you know, at what age do we start investing with our kids? So I think you know, at a high level, we address that. A big one was around savings and how do we get our kids to encourage to save? Uh, we spent a little bit of time talking about that. Um, but it's interesting to see kind of these common themes that parents have, you know, kind of drifted towards. Um, and like I said, we're going to send out a, uh, a follow up um, communication to answer all the questions that came in. Um, but out of respect for everybody's time, uh, we're going to close the session tonight and i just wanted to thank everybody again for being here uh that's in the audience uh, we had thousands of people in the audience tonight which is pretty cool um and we're going to do some more of this in the future so so be on the lookout but you know tim eli christy your perspectives have truly enriched you know our understanding of parenting and, and financial education and kind of the profound impact that these types of conversations you know can have on our children's lives so I just wanted to say thank you and also thank you to Christy um, for coming in and talking about, you know, some of the customer experiences that you deal with in here every single day. And um, as, we, as we bring this kind of evening to a close, I mentioned in the beginning that, you know, we're going to select three high schools and we're going to do a thousand dollar donation to each school um, on the behalf of STEP and all of our guests, you know, here tonight. And um, we had a number of um, entries from different high schools, um, but we had some um, repetitive high schools that kept popping up. So the first winner is Ann Arbor Huron High School in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, so Ann Arbor Huron High School um, is a winner of a thousand dollar donation. Also, Ben Davis High in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, is going to get a thousand dollar donation. And lastly, Del Val High School, DVHS in Del Val, Texas, um, is the third winner tonight. Um, so congratulations to all of these three schools. And I really thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and a blessed holiday season from all of us at STEP and on behalf of Eli and Tim. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.